As far as winter soups go, this one is really hard to beat. Oh, four Michelin stars doesn't exist, you say? <laughs> Dude, you haven't tried the soup. Now let's go! All right, let's start with what takes the longest, which is the butternut squash. So what I would do here is just take the very top. And so if you're not familiar with a butternut squash, this whole section is hollow, and this neck, as we call it, is solid. So we're gonna roast the hollow, poach the solid, you shall see. But what we wanna do first is peel the neck. And so just work your way around and you wanna stop peeling where the butternut squash begins to curve. You know, and something I like to do when I'm cooking and especially when I'm doing a lot of veggies, just keep a little bowl like this. Whether you compost or not, it's just handy to have this bowl and then take it to where you need it. And then so what I'm gonna do is make a cut right there at the bottom of where I peel. And if you look right through here, hollow, right? This one in half. And now what you wanna do is just scoop out these seeds, which you can roast actually. And so if you wanna do that, save those and just pop those on a sheet pan for now. Now with the neck, we're going for about one inch cube. So I'm gonna slice into thirds like so. Lay those down, thirds again, sideways. And I'll measure this out by putting my knife directly in between so I can see the half. And from there, I'll slice the half and then I'll slice the quarters. Same way you would do a sushi roll to get it consistent. Okay, so before we continue on, the first thing we need to do, which takes the longest, is roast this squash. So I have all my halves cut here. I'm just spraying them with a little oil. Any kind of neutral oil is fine. This is just avocado. Man, rosemary salt, if you know, you know. And if you don't know, I just posted the video yesterday. So I'll put a link in the corner right now. We're just gonna hit it with a little bit of rosemary salt. This is so perfect with squash. This is totally extra. You don't need to do it, but if you want, tuck a little piece of sage in there. It will stick with the oil and then flip that upside down. Just gonna be a nice little aromatic in there that creates this little sage perfume steam in the cavities of these butternut squash because they are roasted upside down like this. Now we're just gonna bake at 375 until fork tender. Leek, shallot, onion. With the onion, just straight in half like so. Root end right here, tiniest little piece. Peel it up, turn it sideways, and we're just gonna julienne. Does not need to be perfect. When you get about three quarters of the way through, flip, continue into a receptacle. Almost forgot, I already did it, but you wanna make a little V cut like this to get that root out before this. Now the leek. We're gonna peel it down a bit. Leeks are notoriously dirty, so I'll get it about there. And from here, I'll just slice into rings. Now when you get up here, this isn't trash. All you need to do is peel back a couple more layers like so, and all of that is amazing. The unfortunate thing with leeks, because of the way they grow, they trap a lot of sand and dirt. So the only way to really clean them properly is to drop them in water like this and then pull them out, which will leave all that sand trapped at the bottom. You know, give them a good rinse and then what you can do is just pick it out like so. Drop those in there, no more sand. Last thing, just slice up your shallots. Same thing, julienne, just like the onion. Add the shallots to the onions and the leeks. Last but not least, some nice bunched carrot. And with these, take the top. I'm just gonna cut it into nice rounds. Just make sure when you're getting towards the thinner bottom, you're cutting them longer, right? And add that to the onions. Oh, and by the way, nice bunched carrots like this. I don't, I don't peel them. I only scrub them with the scrubby side of a clean sponge and it does a really good job. All right, nice large pot. Heat on, about medium heat, just a little neutral oil. This is just avocado, but you can use whatever, canola, grapeseed. Go ahead and add in your carrots and all your onions. Work it in, and we'll just begin cooking this down. Okay, it's been about five minutes, and remember, we're just sweating this, no color. So this is looking good. I'm now gonna add some crushed garlic. Full recipe will always be in the description, but I'm gonna keep saying it. And then we're gonna add in all the necks of the squash, plus our seasoning, which is a little more rosemary salt. You know, you know, mix this in, same deal. Keep the heat medium to low so it's only sweating. And we'll sweat down the garlic and squash for a few minutes, making sure nothing has any color. And then we'll add our stock, in this case, veggie stock. Also, Sergeant Gilbert in the house. Reporting for duty as much as you like. Pepper is a preference. I love pepper. Now I turned up the heat to medium high. I'm gonna add my stock. In this case, we're using vegetable stock. I've tried making these butternut squash soups with meat stocks, like chicken, for example. And I just think it's always better with veggie. It's just a cleaner taste. And something to note, this dish will have bacon as a garnish, but you can simply just leave that out for an incredible vegetarian dish. And even if you wanna go vegan with it, instead of putting cream in the end like we'll do, try coconut milk. That would be amazing. Let's check on our squash. They've been going for about 20 
25 minutes, probably not done, but they're really close. I'm gonna give these another about 10 minutes, probably about 35 total and they'll be good. Now, just simmer down and let this thing simmer. Medium high heat, and as soon as those squash are done roasting and a little cooled down, we're gonna add the roasted squash to this, which brings in that beautiful roasted flavor. Okay, these are done after 35 minutes. I just let them cool down for about 15. And what we wanna do now is just scoop out all that flesh and simply add it to the rest of your soup. And you wanna do that when these are just about fork tender. Little pop, medium heat, whole stick of unsalted butter. We're making brown butter to add to the soup. This makes it insane. You can see the butter starting to brown a little around the edges here. And I'm gonna keep stirring so the milk solids will brown evenly. From milk, you get cream. From cream, you get butter, right? So there's little bits of cream and milk residue left over from the butter making process. And when we cook the butter like this and we brown it, you can see these bubbles starting to form. It's just beginning to start to brown. We brown those milk milk solids and we bring out the most beautiful nutty aroma. I'm 100% sure you've made brown butter in a pan on accident, like if you throw some butter in a pan and then you throw an egg in, that butter's a little brown. Probably a flavor you've always loved but never realized it. I can literally see it happening now. I can see these little brown dots. I can also smell the aroma. We're just about done. Turning that off, you can see it, right? Nice caramel color. Straight into the soup. Just be careful, a little scary, but it's okay. Give that a good mix. Everything's nice and fork tender right now. The soup is good. We're gonna shut it off, let it cool down just a little before blending. It's not the best soup ever unless we have some incredible garnishes, so let's get to it. Okay, here's a trick for chives I really love. Damp paper towel, fold it in half, half again, half one more time. Lay it out, bunch up your herbs, go near the base of the chive like so, and roll up. Firmly, but not too tight. You got this neat little package. Come up to the top here. A lot of these tops are usually frayed, so I'll just get rid of them like that. Nice sharp knife, really important. And we're just gonna start guiding through. There's a lot of fine dining restaurants where when they hire a new chef, they'll have him do something like cut chives or brunoise a shallot, or maybe make scrambled eggs, because if they can nail those simple things, you know they got the stuff. And this you can just keep in a Tupperware in the fridge and just pull it out as you need it. The little bit of damp paper towel helps to keep it really nice and fresh. Some nice French bread. And what I did with this was just put it in the freezer 20 minutes. That's gonna allow me to get some really nice clean slices. And I want some thin little crostinis for this soup. That's what I'm talking about. This is how I like to do crostini, a lot of olive oil. Some kind of salt, we're hitting the rosemary salt again because it just makes sense. And so I'll season that oil a little bit like so. I'll take all my pieces of bread, boom, 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 lay them out. I don't want to take an hour and a half to make a crostini, you know what I mean? Boom, 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 boom. And just mix like this. They don't have to be perfect. Flip, like so. And then I'll just bake these at 375. Woo! About 12, 15 minutes on the crusty, and you got a tiny bit dark for my liking, but it's fine. Last but certainly not least, some bacon, which I also froze and then pulled out for about 15 minutes. And what I'm gonna do with this, really don't need it to be absolutely perfect. I'm gonna cut into rough, square shape, just from a whole pack of frozen bacon like this. Now I'll turn the whole thing sideways, and we'll just slice into cubes like this. Straight into a cold pan, get rid of this board. Cook that bacon over about medium, medium high heat. And if you want, you could just as easily bake the bacon and then chop it up. This is a small detail, but when the bacon renders down and cooks in its own fat and gets crispy that way, it's just slightly better, just slightly less dry, but either way will be fine. There we go, just about 10, 12 minutes on the bacon. It's nice and crispy. Just gonna drain out all this fat and then just get the bacon on some paper towel. And those are good bacon bits, let me tell you. Let me squeeze in one last little garnish. Creme fraiche, whipped for about five minutes. Gonna make it really light and airy, just like whipping cream. Only one thing left to do. Now, the soup is hot, but not like scalding, boiling hot. There's steam coming off, it's hot. We're gonna fill up our blender about halfway. This is an incredibly expensive, but the best blender in the world, in my opinion. I'm gonna put a link to this one, as well as a budget one, which was my last blender, which was really great for the price, in case you are wondering about blenders. And we're gonna pour a little touch of warm cream in with every batch. Now pop your lid on, towel over the top, right? You need the heat to be able to escape, so just a towel over like that loosely, and we'll just give a really good blend. Just about a minute. Now we got to taste, make sure the seasoning is there. God, that's good. So we're good. 
Now into your pot over here. Woo, silky smooth. And repeat with the rest. This is a semi-thick soup, but if you want it thinner, add more stock. You want it thicker, add less stock. Let's finish, starting with your beautiful soup. A little touch of olive oil. Sergeant Gilbert in the house, you know what it is, black pepper. What I'm gonna do here is just a line of chives over off on one side. Bacon over here. Whew. Nice quenelle of our whipped creme fraiche right in the middle. Oh my gosh. And of course, last but certainly not least, just tuck in your two little crostinis off on the side like this. My friends. Yeah. <laughs> Mmm, mmm, insane my friends, I'll see you tomorrow, yeah, until next time, you know I love you animals!